Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all having a blessed day. The Lord gave me a word and really put it upon my heart to share this word this, um, with you all. And uh, it's just, I feel like God is really stirring us up um, in this time and in this season. And the title of this message, of this devotion is The New Normal. See, we use the word normal and normalcy uh, because our world is being turned upside down and we're all saying, you know, can we just go back to normal? Can things be normal again? Will things ever be normal again? You know, we say, I want to go back to what is normal. And will we ever be normal again? And I say, no, we won't be normal again. Here's the definition of normal. Conforming to a standard, usual, typical, or expected. I want you to really grab a hold of these definitions. Just think about that. And when we start talking about God and the season that we're in and the Word of God and what He's doing in, in us, the definition of, of conform, it says the definition of normal is conforming. So here's the word definition of conform. Behave accordingly to social acceptable conventions or standards. Wow. Think about that. Behave according to socially acceptable conventions and standards. Well, I guess as a believer in Jesus Christ, we are not normal then. Because we don't conform ourselves to socially acceptable standards. Just because the world says it's okay to do, it doesn't agree with the Bible. So the Bible supersedes what the world says is a standard. So as a believer, automatically, we aren't normal but we keep on wanting to be normal. Wow, that should really wake up the church. We need to stop trying to be normal according to the society. That does not mean we become weird. God is not weird. God would never be glorified as being weird. But listen to what the Bible says. We pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What do you think God's kingdom is in heaven? When we're praying that to come down here on earth, it is not the same as the normalcy of this world. His kingdom is not normal, but his kingdom is perfect. And so, man, as believers, we're not normal. I think we need to start realizing, stop trying to be normal according to society. We need to be normal according to his kingdom. Not be weird because God is not weird. Not be confusing because God is not confusing, but we need to line ourselves up with God's kingdom. See, Israel used the same words to Moses. In Exodus 14, during the exodus from Egypt, Israel had a hard time leaving normal. Egypt represented the world. Physically, they left Egypt, but they never, uh, Egypt never left them mentally. They always had that in their mind. Physically, they left, but mentally, they never left. See, they're, they're at the Red Sea, and uh, the sea is before them. Pharaoh's army is, is behind them. And this is what they tell Moses. Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Were, weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why do you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this world, this, this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. See, they were saying, let's go back to normal. Let's go back to normalcy. Bring us back to normal. Normal was slavery. Normal was bondage. See, we know what to expect. Israel says, we know what to expect in slavery. We, we know what to expect in bondage. See, we are slaves but we knew the system and how it works. They even fed us. Just ponder that for a moment. Israel, God's chosen people, they would rather go back to slavery. They would rather go back to, to uh, making bricks. And then they said, they, and then, um, they say, go back and, you know, go back and read some of this and you will rethink about your response to what's happening today. I encourage you to go back and read some of this and their, their response. You will start rethinking of how you're going to process the season that, that we're in. Even when they said, 
you know, you go find your own straw and make your own bricks and then still meet the quota. Could our normal be bondage? What is comfortable? Needing no faith, needing no trust in God. Is that our normal? Normal, conforming to a standard. Usual, typical, or expected. See, are we living in a, in a, in a time where if I, if I know what to expect, so I'm fine with that. Or conform. Behave accordingly to social acceptance. Wow. Think about those words. See, the word said, God heard their cry. God was bringing them to the promised land, a great land that he had for them. See, I want us to understand, we have a supernatural God. I think sometimes we downgrade him. Yes, we downgrade God to be a natural, to be natural like us instead of us being like him. You know, think about that. Do we downgrade the supernatural God to be like us? See, the miracles that God did all through scripture. Then Jesus comes, he's doing his miracles. He does what he sees the father do. And then he's given us that power. How can that be normal? We're not living in a normal society. We have, we've adapted to what we think should be normal. God says, I've given you that same power to release it right now, today, supernatural power. This is what normal should be. This power being manifested in, in this world. Maybe God is preparing us to change the normal. I think he is. I think he's preparing us to change the normal. Here's a question. What if God has heard our cry from his people? That's you and I, his sons and daughters. And, and what the enemy has tried to use for evil, because this is evil, this virus is evil, and everything else that's going on is evil. It's not from God. And he turns this around for our good. See, are we looking ahead for the good that God is bringing us? Because he's bringing it to us if we would see that. Even the word of God says that all things he'll turn around for good. See, God is going to lead us through this to a much better place. He is going to lead us through a much better place. I'm not just talking about a better economy, a better, better physical place. I'm not talking about better finances and better jobs. God is going to do all those things, but that's not what God is talking about. How about a place spiritually with him that we have never been before. Wouldn't that be awesome to be in a place spiritually, a relationship with this Jesus, a relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that we've never been before, where the gifts of the Spirit are activated and flow continually in this world, where miracles are normal everyday occurrences. And the word repentance, I want you to hear this, and the word repentance is not a bad word. Think about that. Right now it's a bad word. Even in the church, the church doesn't want to use that word. But, and the word repentance is not a bad word, but the only thing that we can do to receive Christ. And it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. See, the people, I, I mean, we need to pray that the people are overcome so much by the goodness of God, of his love toward us, that that's what leads them to repentance. Isaiah 43, 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and the streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people. Here it is. My chosen, the people I have formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. His people. We are his people. He's going to take care of us. He's going to provide for us. Even in the desert, he's going to provide for us. Even in the storms, he's going to provide for us. But I like what he says is forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. Even Paul talks about that. Stop dwelling on the past. What are you reaching for? What's the goal? That you, what's your aim? What's your target? And see, I'm doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing today. Church, he is doing a new thing today. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? If we don't have his vision, we won't perceive it. 
And I want to leave you with this. I'm excited because I want you to get this word today. This is a, this is a, a now word for the, this time in our life and this, in this season. Get ready, church. There's going to be great things that God is going to do. We, uh, we, will we proclaim his praises, it says, or will we look back and want to go back to bondage? See, that last verse, it says, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praises. God brought them out to, to, to have worship with him, to have a relationship with him. God is looking at us today saying, church, people, even people who don't know me, I, I am still God of all the nations, and I want to have a relationship with you. We are one with a supernatural God. We are one with a supernatural God. We are, we are entwined with the supernatural God through the Holy Spirit who will not conform himself to this world. God will not conform himself to this world. We will never be normal if you are a believer in Jesus Christ. You have to come to that fact. We will not be normal because we are entwined. We are twisted together. We are wrapped together in the arms of of God. He's not normal. He's supernatural. So I leave you with this. Could it be that God is searching for a people that will praise him in the storm and implement a new normal in this world, even in the storm that only God could be glorified in? See, will our normal be even in a storm God will be glorified. I leave you with this word today. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage everyone who is listening today. This is a now word. There's a new normal. God is setting it up. Will we walk in it? Will we be there with him in it? Come on, church. If you're a believer, you're not normal. We are not conforming to the social acceptance of this world. I want to encourage you today. Come on, let's get, let's get wrapped up in God's arms. Let's call on his kingdom. Let's walk in his kingdom today. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Have a blessed day.